Good morning and welcome to another Wednesday in the kitchen. The phone lines are open, so that must mean it's the culinary hotline bling! Yes! So this morning I've got the smoothest man on social media in the kitchen. Wait until you hear this man deliver the smooth, sultry lines. It's all about food, I promise you, I promise you. We've got the man himself from the West Coast who came down. He drove down at 3 o'clock this morning, so you better give him the biggest round of applause. It's David Boite! <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, I'm so happy to have you. I want to say it's nice to meet you, but I've known you for a bit. But first time in this kitchen? First time in the kitchen. How are you feeling? Um, I do better in front of a bri. Okay. We're gonna work, we're gonna figure this out. Oh, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. It. So David has completely taken South Africa by storm by his, well, using his amazing knowledge and culinary expertise when it comes to everything viscous. I don't know about expertise, but... Expertise! <laughs> Man is amazing! I just like to bry. Like to bry. <laughs> I love it. So, t tell me about that. To we're going to be brying, but inside we're bringing the bry yeah. vibes Yeah, inside. there's still a fire going. There's still a fire, fire going. But we got the poiki, so we're ready to go. Absolutely. What are we making in the poiki this so morning? So, we're going to do a Mediterranean-inspired mussel pot. Mm -hmm. So, instead of like your normal creamy mussels, we're going to do a little bit of cream. But this is a bit more Mediterranean-inspired, so we're going to like add some sun-dried tomatoes. Ooh. A little bit of rosé, um, fresh, fresh parsley, and some rosemary. Amazing. Let's do a swap. I'm going to let okay. you stand this side. Yeah. So mussels are really great because they cook rapidly, right? Quickly. Like and seven minutes, eight minutes. You're going to pop them in. You're always going to go for fresh mussels. We're going to talk about that in a bit. Sure. Um, I just want to get this going. Please do. So Let's get this going. start off with a little bit of olive oil in the pot. Get that nice and hot. So I really appreciate what you're doing this morning, purely because when everybody, when anybody talks about braai, you know it's like a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? But that often leads to eating many hours later after than, than, than expected. Well, Muscles. That's, that's usually the problem. That's the problem. That's yeah. usually the problem. So when you braai and you, and you have a dope at the same time, that's generally when your meat goes dry. You don't want that, you know. No. But us gaan nou braai. You see, wanna eat ons, us gaan nou braai. No, so no, nie laat nie. <laughs> but muscles come in in that way that they can actually feed the guests really quickly. So give them it's, a good start. Yeah, it's a good start. There we it's go. It's a good little bowl to have. Can I get a wooden spoon? Oh, a wooden spoon, you can. Sorry. So, um, so it's a new kitchen, David. So I'm still trying to work my way around. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Wooden spoons. Did you find? So, uh, kitchen expert. Oh, that's me. Um, there we go. Here we go. I found one. I found there we go. One. We found it. We found okay. it. I love that I know your kitchen better than you. Thank you so much. I'm still getting used okay. to it. Okay. So we're gonna brown some onions first. Mm -hmm. Get that going in there. Careful. And the fact that you're using a poiki pot for this dish... You have to. You have to. Otherwise, it's not a pot. <laughs> and also, obviously, the heavy lid traps that steam in there, helping those muscles open up a lot, lot faster. But I, I feel like in 2024, every South African needs to start the year off with a poiki pot and have a poiki pot at home. Official, pot. official. So what I like about these ones, they're already coated, so they need to struggle with oiling them and keeping them, like... You know, so just get a nice little pot. Okay. Have you, you ever know. lent your poiki pot to someone and it came mm. back? Never. Never. Just period, right? I didn't get to the second part. You got to the first part. You just never yeah. lend your no, poiki no, no, pot no, out. Don't lend anything to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Viscous rule number one. Yeah, don't yeah, lend no. your poiki pot. <laughs> okay. But this is nice because it's enamel glaze. So like you said, you don't have to do the upkeep and looking yeah. after and it. And it's nice and white inside, especially for me shooting. Like a dark black pot is difficult to sometimes see inside, so... Anyway, there we go. I get that. So talk to me about okay. You get the foot okay. muscles well, getting carried this, away. While this browns a little bit, if you can chop the rosemary for me, sure thing. Finely chop. See, I don't have the best chopping skills, so I leave that to you. I love that. You and I spoke about this before. Like, you don't have to be culinary trained to have an impact on the culinary industry. I absolutely love that you've taken so much from the West Coast, and it's just come through in the food that you that you created. It's authentic. It's delicious. You don't faff around with it. Where did it all start? Well, actually, I, I had no interest in cooking whatsoever until I moved to the West Coast. Uh -huh. And then just seeing all the, like, fresh ingredients. And, you know, the West Coast is known for potatoes and it's fish. And what I love about it, it's like there's still, like, a bit of, like, raw energy to the West Coast. And you just, you make a fire on the beach. Don't tell anyone. Make a fire on the beach. And then you just, you know, cook, get some mussels. You can even go get some mussels off the rock at Yellands Bay. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So... 
when I started there and when I moved there, there was just such an inspiration to start cooking. And once you start with it, you know, it just kind of bites you. Yeah. Okay, you can pop that in there. Sure thing. So, um, not being from the West Coast, what was your first experience when tasting bokums? It is African dinner bokums. Bokums are dried <laughs> fish. I am obsessed with it, but I'm not allowed to bring any more home from the West Coast. Does it smell? Because it doesn't have the most delicious smell, but it's full of umami. Very fishy. What was your first experience like eating bokums? It took me a while. I think I lived in the West Coast for like quite a few months before I, I even tried one. Um, I'm not a fan of them as is, I'm not going to lie. But it, like a nice bokum on the fire, you can actually rehydrate them. You put Did them, you know that? You put them back on, like if you're doing a braai on the grill, put the bokum, fill it on. Actually rehydrates them, makes them nice and, and, and juicy maybe. And it's actually really, really nice. A little bit of lemon juice on the bokum, on the fire. Beautiful little People, snack. People, we come here to learn every day. Okay, we're, adding every some, day. we're adding some garlic, sorry. Garlic going in. So that. at the moment, it's our onions and our rosemary. I'm going to try something quite dangerous. Yeah. I'm going to tip the pot slightly so the camera can see what's inside because I want our viewers at home yeah. to have a look. Don't do this at home. It's hot. Don't there we go. I'm checking it. There we go. Oh, cameraman yeah. PD, have you got that, cameraman PD? He's giving me a nod. He's giving me, he's very serious. Cameraman PD is a very serious man. There we go. Okay. Down, point your pot down. There we go. Okay, get it back. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with sun-dried tomato pesto. You can yeah. either do whole sun-dried tomatoes, cut them mm -hmm. up finely, put them in. This really gives you like a nice, I'm just going to do like this yeah. one doesn't fit. You know what? I'm just going to do we, like... We keep, we keep things real. The, f the spoon doesn't fit the jar, but Darby's making a plan. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay. So we're busy with the base. Darby, I don't want you to drop the mussels just yet. No, 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 we're not. We're going to let the Sorry, base I'm go for a little bit. So nice. Africa, <laughs> you're not going to go anywhere because we're going to tell you about those amazing West Coast mussels. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more culinary hotline. Bling! Ding, ding, ding! Hey! It's my feel good. And welcome back to the kitchen with more culinary hotline bling. Yay, yay, yay. Caught me off guard there. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen. Darby's still with us. And also, if you have any questions about anything, anything, not just about food, anything, send us your voice notes to 63 Darby, yes. things are smelling amazing. Yeah, I've added some... Some cream, uh -huh. some 50 ml cream, a little bit of uh, rosé wine. If you don't want to do the wine, you don't have to. I like it because it just kind of deglazes a bit, gets those flavors right. off the sides of the pot. I'm going to do that dangerous thing again that I don't want you to do at home, but I really want you to see inside this pot because it is looking amazing. Here we go. Oh, it's looking silky. It is smelling amazing. It's looking so good. So the next thing that goes in are our mussels. The mussels, yeah. There we go. So, so Always fresh mussels. Always, always try to get live mussels. I know when you... Don't live in a coastal area, it's not that easy. Mm. But if you do live in Cape Town, if you do live on the coast, you have no excuse. No half shell frozen. No Never. excuse. How do we, when shopping for fresh mussels, what are the things that we look out for? Well, you always try to make sure they're alive. Okay. So ah, I've got an idea. Can you do this part in Afrikaans? <laughs> in the Derby voice. In the Derby voice. And if there's any translation that's needed, I'll give it. But do it. <laughs> Okay, so now what you're going to do, you're going to go to your muscles, make sure they're alive, right? What do you do? The sea, there's no muscle smell. Yeah. Then, you, then you know it's fresh. All right. Okay, so usually with muscles... Love! <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. Usually with muscles, there's a little bit of a beard here. Uh -huh. You just pull it off, clean off all these little hairs, and then you're ready to go. Once this is nice snap, we'll turn the sap. Get that ready. Muscles are really quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me get that butter on the side. We can s I'm going to pass oh, those the... muscles to you in yeah. the meantime. Cool. Keep an eye on this butter. So I'm just going to add this in here. So there's two ways to do this usually. What you're going to do is you can either add the muscles to your sauce. Mm -hmm. So the muscles are going to release a lot of um, liqueur, or liquor, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to like make, it's not going to be as creamy. So like you get the thick creamy right. one. If you want your sauce to be a bit creamier, you cook your muscles on the side. Drain the water out and then add them. I like to add this because it really gives you that fresh, fresh oceany, yeah. oceany taste. So, so I'm going to leave that in there. Sorry. I was always taught with mussels from the West Coast specifically, you never need salt in the dish that you're using. There's enough of that salty, briny ocean flavor. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of like, it's almost like a seawater, like mm -hmm. kind of in the, in the fresh mussels that will, will make it nice and, and salty for you. But I always add a little bit of salt to my sauce. Got you, got you, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to close that up. And you know your muscles already once they open up. 
So usually about seven minutes or so, it's really, really quick. You, you can keep checking, check them, see they're closed, no, nope, not ready, keep them going. Awesome, okay, okay so, so we're going to so check while in we on wait that. for that, we're going to start on our tuna steak. Cool. I've got quite a bit of butter in this pan. Is that for the, for the steak? Yes, we're going to do a sauce first. Oh, yes, okay. Then we're going to do the steak. So, butter, is this, is this on? Yeah. I can put it back on for you. Yeah. Put it back on. Melt a bit of butter first. We're going to go in with some onion. And we just want this onion to, like, soften. So, we're doing a tuna steak dish. What, what is the name of this whole dish that we're making? It's tuna steak with creamy caper sauce. Nice. Okay, there butter, we go. Butter, garlic, caper sauce. Beautiful. Yeah, so you just want to do like brown these onions a little bit till they get soft. I, I hate crunching into like a crunchy mm. onion essentially. Also means the flavor hasn't been released, so you want to make sure you cook those onions out. Yeah. There we go. Okay. While you're busy cooking and doing your thing, we're going to talk yes. and work at the same time. Let's do it. Tell me about West Coast festive season. I am very familiar about what a Christmas table looks like inland yes but when it comes to west coast christmas what actually happens what what's the spread what's the food like on the so day the nice thing about the west coast is crayfish season during december as well mm. so you're gonna have crayfish you're gonna have roast you're gonna have your muscle pot there to start people off snook obviously okay so the nice thing about like i always say like south africans don't eat enough fish true and we don't eat like the fish that like fresh fish that is caught here so a snook is also so super affordable because for like you can buy a nice big snook 150 and you can feed like nine people off of it so your christmas table big snook in the middle risk to cook off to the side some crayfish some mussels and if you really want to like risk it maybe like few bokums like you said oh nice or do like a nice bokum butter so just Favorite, grate yeah. some grate some bokums into some butter, mix it up, and then you put it on like a nice toasty or something. And you've actually got the or perfect tool for making the bokum butter that I like using. Yes. Like a microplane, a fine zester. You get that nice, light, tiny, fine strand yeah, of bokum. Yeah, that's how I yeah. like to like, add my garlic usually. So we're just going to add a little bit of, grate a little bit of garlic in here. You can either chop it finely if you don't have a grater or crush it. Also, zesting garlic is my favorite way to prep it. It's just so much quicker. So there we go. It's nice. You know, it's a nice little paste. You can just pop that in there. And let that cook a little bit. Looking good. So for anybody that is looking to start a YouTube channel or social media food channel, yep. do you have any advice for them? Especially because I love the fact that you've been inspired and your cooking knowledge comes from the West Coast. So. Mm. I love the fact people don't have to go to culinary school to be part of the industry. What advice do you have for anybody looking to get into food social media? I think with, with any social media, anything you want to do, just be authentic, be relatable, and just be yourself. Don't try and imitate someone else that you see. Just like and do what you do what you know or you have fun with. I mean, I don't really know, but I just have fun with it. So I think then then it really helps. And just be consistent. Mm. And yeah, unfortunately, with social media, you just have to keep creating, keep creating, and keep posting. Um, and don't follow likes, don't chase the likes or the shares or that kind of stuff. Just, just post what you want to see. I always say, if, if, what, what do you search out for when you go on YouTube or, or Instagram? Create that content and then people will follow. There's always a niche for something. Nice, nice. I dig that. Um, Ryle De Mornay, I could sense him sniffing while I was busy talking to you. So let's bring Raul in. Yeah, bro, you know why though? Because why? Because you're talking about some of the most incredible memories, nostalgic stuff. You, you, you spoke about snook, mm. rooster cook. Bro, this is stuff that I have such great memories from in my family. We would literally gesalz over a snook and especially the fresh ones that you buy in the road off the bucky yes. <laughs> back in the day. So you are speaking my language and obviously you've stepped it up. You've elevated the game here with, I believe it's tuna that you're using. Yes. But, oh man, I think anything that that uh, you said now is important to me and that's that South Africans need to eat more fish. We are surrounded by such incredible options on our coastline as well. So thank you for elevating that yeah. and bringing that to our attention. It's a, a, a great reminder and the smells I'm getting right now, you, you boys are up to something good here in the kitchen. So how's yeah, the meal actually going? Because a lot of talking happening here, which yeah, I'm not yeah. complaining about. Yeah, most of them are open, so we're almost there for that. Oh, okay, about so it's good. Yeah. It's smelling amazing. Um, also, by the way, who dressed us today? Yeah, you, you look incredible just by I the way. I must say, your outfit is looking incredible, huh? Hey? Is looking... <laughs> <laughs> The boys in brown dressed in boys tan. In brown. Yes, we are. We had to we had to step it up. Obviously, when you have a superstar like this in the yes. kitchen serving you, you got to dress for the occasion. And I think we've we've almost uh, almost elevated our look, right? Yeah, that's the <laughs> color scheme is West Coast sand. That's the celebrity scheme. So okay, so Davi, we're going okay. in with some wine. We're gonna deglaze that. Like a splash of wine, mm -hmm. quickly, not too much. Mm -hmm. Just want to okay. get that. Oop, might be a little bit too much. 
But, but it's, it's going to cook out, yeah. So there's no such thing as too much. And I'm sorry, just to make make sure, is this one of the butters that you're working on? Because earlier you were talking about a bokum butter that you could no, have no, done no, earlier. This is, is this a this version just, of that? No, this is normal butter. Oh, okay. Just just, for your Christmas table, you could do bokum butter if you oh, want. Oh, man, but it already feels like Christmas out here. It so does, keep, it, keep it going, keep it going. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to continue while enjoying these smells. Let me just get some more of that on my clothes so I can just have the experience. Thank you. All right, so... Cream going in, yep, and then the the, we're going to finish with the sauce. We're not going to do it. Okay, so we're going to finish the sauce. Cream goes in, and then the capers join it. Am I yeah, right? A little bit of cream, a little bit of capers, salt and pepper. Then that's done. Then we're going to do the swordfish, ach, the tuna steak quickly. Then we're ready to go. So don't go anywhere. We're going to wrap up this sauce. When we come back, we're going to talk fish and wrap up this dish. Are the coloring hot like bling? It's my feel good. We are back in the kitchen getting ready for our third and final segment of the Culinary Hotline Bling! <laughs> now, the smells coming out the kitchen this morning have been phenomenal. It's amazing. Apparently, one of our guests was driving in and they were like, what's that smell? It's this man. <laughs> and the food <laughs> is amazing. So, look, can I just show you our beautiful caper sauce? <laughs> That's thick. That's thick, that's rich, that's velvety, that's delicious. Yeah, it's rich. Just like, just like, just a spoon. <laughs> right there. But that's not what we're doing. Go for it. Go we're, for it. <laughs> we're going to be serving this with a beautiful piece of tuna. Yes. Talk to me about um, cooking fish. What's your, like, your method, your, your foolproof way of cooking fish? Now, again, you don't have to be very technical, yeah. but like, when it comes to cooking fish, how do you it's do it? It's just uh, quick, quick and simple. It's so, so easy to dry fish out, and you don't want to do that. So, Never. try not to dop first. Just. Do your fish. <laughs> this is important bry, bry information. Absolutely. So, yeah, keep an eye on it quick. For the tuna, we want it. Tuna is one of those fish that you can, like, you almost have it raw. You're just going to sear it. Mm. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Same with, you. like, yellowtail. A lot of people say yellowtail, you have to cook it through. You just lose all the flavor. Because you can have yellowtail sashimi. So same with yellowtail. Just sear it halfway. Cook it, cook it. Keep it nice and pink in the middle. So... Because, like you said, a dry piece of fish is horrible. And yellowtail yeah. goes dry very quickly when it you does. overcook it. So yes. don't do that. Okay, yeah. tuna. I see you've oiled it up beautifully. Yeah, I put some olive oil on, salt and pepper. Olive oil it on both sides nicely. It's a little bit more like salt on both sides, a little bit of pepper. And you're cooking this like you would a normal steak. Steak, yes. Except, yeah, it's going to be really, really quick. So I hope this is nice and hot. So Let me also grab the poiki. Maybe we can yeah. use the big burner. So I can show the people what the muscles look like in a second. Okay, I'm gonna pop that on. There we go. Looking okay. good. And you could do this on the braai? Yes, but also on a pan. Also on a pan. There we yeah, go. You get yourself a fear pan. A fear pan? A pan oh, for like, the fire. So is it like a cast iron pan? Yes, cast iron a, pan. A fear pan. A nice fear pan. Get it hot. The secret is to get it hot as possible. Okay. You want it hot because otherwise it'll, it'll stick or fall apart, you know, because it's going to be quick. And I've seen some chefs, like, literally cry being in, on location with them in the wild when they're cooking fish and it gets stuck. Yeah. It's well, sad. It's yeah. sad. So here's the tip. Get, it, get your pan nice and hot first. Yeah. That way it won't you stick. If you want to do it on a, on a, on a rooster, uh -huh. what's a rooster? A, rooster, a, a, a braai grid? A braai grid. Maybe put some foil. It's a big no-no for a lot of fish fries, but if you're new to it and, you, and you're really scared, put a bit of foil on, put your fish on, and then you can cook it. That's good advice. So I then like it won't that. stick. And also yeah. then your, your grid's clean afterwards. Okay, Wait, gonna... well, how do you clean your bride? But we're going to cook now at the same time while you're busy dropping the fish. Yeah. How do you clean your bride grid? A steel brush. A steel brush? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you, do you do the onion thing? No, just coin no, no, steel just brush. Put it on over the. Heat it up, steel brush it. While it's hot. A bit of newspaper. Who has time for the other stuff? Who has time for the other stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. There okay, we go. We're going to go into this super quick. We're going to use a steel. So, so the nice thing is you can kind of mm. just watch it. You can see it's turning already. The color on the sides are going. There we go. You just I wanted to wonder if Cameron Petey can see this, but literally as Darby says, you can see it's turning from that beautiful rosy pink that's turning a little bit opaque. Yeah. And that's kind of like an indicator. Yes. So not long at all. We're going to flip it. Already got good color there. And you just watch it. You just need to keep an eye. If it goes through, you're going to ruin it. Yeah. You might as well have a can of tuna. Shame. So you don't want also that. Also delicious, but not what we're going for not today. Not what we're going for today. Okay. We'll grab a nice plate there. You can grab that for me. Yes. Okay. That is all pretty much that. It's as quick as that. Perfect. Yeah. You're going to go like that. Boom. You can turn that off. For sure. There you go. Okay. And tell me the sauce. How do you... Oh, we're just going to pan it, eh? 
Go for it. So we're just gonna pop that there. Nice there. Lost my cloth. We'll just pan it. Ooh. Ooh. I can imagine that sauce would be good on, like, honestly, anything. Turn this for the for the euro shot there. Hey, there we go. There we go. I'm gonna pan that over. Ooh. Wow. Just okay. Like that. Okay. And there you go. Oh, one more thing. Last squeeze of lemon. Boom. That's that looks. And there's a nice. I mean, that's a pretty big steak. You can share that with your significant other. Or it's just pretty or much one steak for all the morning. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay, beautiful. I love that. Okay, I've also so got we were... the. I've got the mussels here. Do you want, can I dish Could that you? up? Yeah, that's here for you. So let's bring that closer. So as I mentioned before, with the water that comes out of the mussels, the, the sauce is a little bit more runny than people may be generally used to mm. with when it comes to creamy mussels. But I feel like you need that for but your roast to cook, right? Yeah, it's you a good like... dipping sauce. It's a good sauce to dip. So we're just going to dish that up. And you just get some sauce. Get in there. So they all opened up beautifully. Ooh. You can see it. And the nice thing about a mussel shell is once you're done with this, you can actually use this as cutlery as well. See, because you can just use the shell and then eat your fish. And you know when you're out on the beach and you're brying out of the back of the bucky, you don't want you're not gonna have cutlery, so you're just gonna have no, a mussel shell. All. I wanna call someone to the kitchen who knows, with some who knows a lot about mussels. They're gonna go. bring in Carl Wasty. Yeah, thank you. There we go. Thank there you we so go. much. There we go. Right, I stand back quickly. There what am go. I doing here? Am I chowing? Chow am chowing. I enjoying? Try it. Thank you. Now, what I love, I love seafood. I love mussels. I love this. This is, I'm going to go yeah, right in here. Hands, so I'm going to go straight in the hands here. Mm. You know what? It's also pure. I can taste the ocean. You taste the sea. I can. You put the shell to your ear, you can hear the sea too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hear. Can hear it, oh, this yeah. is great. I'm going to go in with yeah. this because Tear it's also You're going to eat it then. Tear it off. Stuck in the sauce. That's the thing, man. You actually there have to go, go in there with the sauce yep. and the, and yep, the thing. Yep, but get it in there. Yeah, thank Make you. A mess. And, uh, who's your Afrikaans? My Afrikaans is very good. No, 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 no. There we mm. go. Darby is holding the fort today for us while Zoe is away because you oh. don't want to hear us all speak Afrikaans. It's, it's mm. not. That's a good, that's a good Vizca's breakfast right there. Oh. Right? Mmm. Mm. Love. <laughs> this magic. The sauce. The sauce is amazing. Whatever you put into it is love. That's like proper love in that sauce. Oh my word, I wish you could, I would drink this. A little bit of cream, a little bit of wine. This is great. If you want this oh. recipe, and believe me, you want this recipe, go mm. and check out the recipe <laughs> at expressoshow.com. You're going to want to make this. When are we eating that? Try Yo, can get first. the man a knife and fork. Here we go. Thank you. Let's just, just pack it in here. While I'm here, I want to try this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. See, there we go. Look at that. When in Rome. Oh, when, no. in, when in the Vescas. Wow, wow. You can do that. Wow. Yeah. So that's what you think. Oh, there we go. Word. Boom. Tuna, butter, caper, garlic, onions. Okay, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> wow. Not playing, eh? Try. No, you're not. Do I have to leave? Are you guys in a No, you What's can stay. Have, yeah. have it. You, you stay. can stay. Thank you. It's been an absolutely... Oh, wait. Oh, we done. One more. Oh, it's done. There's one do more. Do we have time for one more? Let me, yeah, let me check to the guys upstairs. People upstairs, do, do we still have time for one more recipe? Yeah. We got... One minute? We've got one minute. You guys okay, talk amongst no. yourselves quickly. For one minute, I'm going to... So, Darby, okay. Yeah. Let's okay. talk about this. Um, one minute, I want to get your ultimate bride tips. You've given us some amazing tips on how to clean up bride today. Yeah, tell us. Some great tips. What else, when it comes to brides, is your, your, your do's and your don'ts, if you have any? Use wood, not briquettes. Use wood, not briquettes. <laughs> that way you get... I mean, obviously, you get... And, and, and locally sourced... Or, or, locally sourced, but always... Yeah foreign species of woods. We're talking about sustainability. Yes. Also, Darby spoke about amazing fish and the fish you can use today. Another, another thing that's very important to note yes. is sustainability. Whatever fish you're going to be eating this festive Please. season or from today on, make sure it's sustainable. Check Sassy. Make sure everything's on the green list. We've got to make sure and do our part to ensure that the, there are plenty of fish in the ocean mm. for years to come. Carl Wasty, final, final notes on this amazing okay. seafood spread. Talk yeah. about the butter and the tuna. There's an acidity in there mm. that is just vibing the fish. I'm very impressed with that sauce there. Mm. So I want to put that onto my face as like a, a moisturizer. Okay, we will do, do that. And if you, want, <laughs> if you want to see Carl ways to put that on his face as a moisturizer, make sure you come back next week for more oh. Culinary Hotline Bling. You have been absolutely amazing. You, Let's not make this the last time that no, you're in the kitchen. Don't. I always love having people in the kitchen that are eating like this. South African, you've been amazing. Check us out next week. More Culinary Hotline Bling! Ding, 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 ding.